Neurotransformation Journey. Neurotransformation Journey with Dr. Kathy Holloway introduces viewers to the simple self-care steps that address medical mysteries and restore healthy vitality. Decades of teaching the neuroscience of medical interventions to healthcare practitioners internationally and healing from her own brain injuries illuminate Dr. Kathy's grounded, logical approach to self-care and healing. So now, please welcome your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy Hallway here, physical therapist on Bold Brave TV with your neurotransformation journey. And today we are going to be exploring sensory brain dynamics, sensory brain development and dynamics. And what we've been learning in our conversations here is we've been learning about the neurosignature of our own embodiment through our autonomic nervous system, through our interoceptive processes. And we're going to take a step back for a minute to see just how our autonomic regulation functions through resonance and rhythms which is a direct reflection of our original creation dynamics and the greater processes of nature. So yes, our own fluid rhythmic dance is part of the natural forces and rhythms of our live environment. What do we already know about fluid dynamics in nature? Well, I live in South Florida on the East Coast. Um, think of the Gulf Stream, okay? The Gulf Stream follows this sine wave curve across the ocean, okay? And so we know it's got this rhythmic motion from Africa to here. Um, but in that Gulf Stream, that is a spiraling vortex that's making the sine wave. So um, there's a dynamic fluid flow within that oscillating funnel of the Gulf Stream. And it's at the edges of that vortex, that funnel of fluid where, wow, life is just sparking like crazy. So, you know, here, here in South Florida is the only place in the continental U.S. where the Gulf Stream touches land. And it's a very dynamic place. Um, and the fishing is great. So that's a big example of fluid flow in nature. And as the water evaporates into the air, then the conversation with the jet stream is occurring. Are you going to be delayed flying east to west or west to east, okay, depending on what that funnel of air of the jet stream is, you know, moving along, just like the Gulf Stream in the ocean. And these two rhythms kind of dictate our hurricane season <laughs> year by year. So um, this is working in us as well. And the truth is our are, we begin as a flicker in the field. Um, we're a unique broadcast of biometric frequencies, our fingerprints, our EKGs, our iris scans, and our original embodied language is vibration, and its syntax is that rhythm between resistance and flow. So nature's using rhythm to grow, to unite, to divide, to bring to life, and that's how embryos grow from that rhythm. Uh, and as that fluid vibration of sperm meets egg, the walls are sealed and whoo, the party begins. That rhythmic vibration imprints on our creating cells and creates us, all right? The vitality of our environment and the rhythmic vibration of the fluids translates into communication that we use chemical metabolic electrical electromagnetic or other signals we don't have linear rules for yet so this imprinted information in the fluids is what activates our genetic code and we're actually going to see where that 
percolates up in our blue brain tube. Um, and so this is how we, from the few full pure potentials of this rich fluid field we're in, that we distill and declare our own unique message as we activate our genetic expression. So yes, just as that Gulf Stream loops around and finds its way across the ocean, all right, it is a funnel of dynamic fluid within that, that sine wave, that Gulf Stream. And this is, this is what the vitality of our life depends on. So as we'll see in our embryology stories today, um, we need a vital fluid environment for uh, our conception and for our development and our organization. And this, you know, how this goes in those intrauterine moments, in those months, um, kind of gives us the map we got to start with. Not that it isn't adaptable, not that we can't learn things like we're learning here to slide in and reorganize. This is part of our reorganization. When we understand how we evolve from a blue brain tube and a yellow yolk ball, then uh, we understand the power of our embodied focus. So this is, this is not usually explained this way, okay? But this is the truth of it. When we pause, when we slide in, oh, when we land, when we find our rhythmic embodied belly breathing, then we are what? We are waking up our body-brain communication. We're opening up our brainstem regulation. We are opening up our autonomic nervous system to function as smoothly as possible to keep us organized within as we navigate the world out there. And so the potential of our attention in this way right now is really the root of our healing and is limitless to be true. Um, the source of our healing is beyond our mind's comprehension. And yet when we slide in with a deep belly breath, then we can land in it and learn it and remember it and know it for ourselves. So as we get ready to take a break for round one and I'll get my slideshow together for you, um, we're going to start with that belly breath. So let's go there again. Let's meet there again. You know how it is. You're in your secure corner, all right? And we'll see why this is so important to be in that familiar environment. And we... Ooh, exhale, slide in, find your soft belly breath where you inhale and it all expands and keep going and find your rhythm of your soft breath. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease. Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to easysense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's easysense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, 
achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation on Bold Brave TV. And today we are going to explore our fluid dynamics that grow us, that sustain us, that help us thrive. And to do that, we're going to back up a second and look at the laws of physics and uh, see what they tell us about our formation, our creation, our self-function. And um, so first, what we need to know is that nature uses rhythm to balance internal and external forces and create new forms. So all live forms begin as spheres of fluid that spiral in a gravitational field to create structure. And fluid waves meet and create spirals of form, all right? And we can see this in this tulip tree in my old neighborhood. This curving tree trunk tells you what? Oh, that's where the growth of that tree met the wind, was looking for the sun, created itself in response to its environment, feeding its needs. And, or the seashell picked up on our local beach here. Yes, there's form that grew in the interplay of rhythmic spirals of waves. So here's how that translates. Spiraling trickles of blood cells form our tubes, our arterial tubes, so that we can have rapid oxygen delivery to our tissues. Our neurons create spiraling nerve pathways. Our gut tube from mouth to rectum follows the same fluid form dynamics as do all of our organ systems. And it starts with those two fluid conceptus tubes we've talked about. A, your surging blue brain tube, and B, your yellow yolk ball. That will eventually surge forward, tug back, and create this stable you know there it's that dance between stability and mobility you need a container for your transformation and your growth and so there's the dance of that beginning and one important thing i want you to see here is that as these spiraling tubes complexify and grow there's many motions occurring one is the roundabout motion of a funnel, but it's also moving up and down. And in that multidimensional movement, look at how growth occurs. This is the same vortex of a fluid tube starting simple, okay? It's spinning one speed on the outside and a different on the inside. It's pulsing up and down and it gets more and more complex. This is how we came into form. All right, so when we talk about uh, brain growth, neural tube dynamics, when we talk about um, these fluid spheres forming the tubes of our lungs, our guts, our vascular system, this is the dynamic that's going on. And a simple way to look at it, here's your blue brain tube surging and the yellow yolk ball tugging. And guess what? Right here, that little white collar right there, that's the one place, your mouth, where 
the mesoderm, the third layer, does not directly penetrate. So again, we need a fulcrum, we need a fixed moment for growth to keep organizing us. And that's what, that's what this spot starts as. So from that fixed point between blue brain tube and yellow yolk ball, guess what? Your heart, your heart grows from the mesoderm around that spot. In New England, we had a saying, my heart was in my mouth, right? Yes, here's your heart growing forward around that stability spot of your mouth. And that means that as your heart tubes start to pulse and flow and figure out their form, that then the mouth becomes the pivot for your heart to pivot into your chest wall. So it's a very exciting little journey in here. And uh, what we see, blue brain tube surges as the heart tube tucks in, the yolk ball starts to find its tubular form. And oh, you know, once that heart tube is tucked in, it reaches up to feed the brain. And this reaching up forms those yellow pharyngeal pouches that are gonna build our face and our mouth. So while all of this is happening, that rhythmic tug and, and flow, that glide and grind, and the spiraling going on within to complexify us to meet our needs, and what we see here is that tubular dynamics, okay? As things get more complex, here's a four-week conceptus, a four-week fetus here, a brain tube of heart tube, of umbilicus tube coming in. And from four to six weeks, it gets a lot more complicated, okay? That um, here's your satellite dish, back of your brain back there that's going to imprint important information. This is where our eyeball stalks are trying to connect to that cerebellum back there so that we can close the satellite dish by eight weeks. We've got the blueprints for all of our organs imprinted and percolating in us by eight weeks gestation. And um, the umbilicus is in place, bringing blood flow to, first to the liver and then to the heart because the liver does the filtering. And um, so this is eight weeks, okay? Embryogenesis, we're ready to go. We're ready to grow as the fetus that we're becoming. But let's just take a moment to understand this dynamic within that when we land in our breathing like this within, that, uh, you know, it's the tubular glide and grind, it's the spiraling of fluids within, it's the ignition of our nervous system to all these structures. And that's what we're going to look at next, okay? Because here's the story, all right? Blue brain tube, yellow yolk ball. Oh, things start to complexify and oh, then time passes and here we are. All right. What if we thought about our own structure in this way? The yolk ball, our vascular mesoderm in there, the brain tube. Okay. What if we thought of all of the wisdom dynamics going on in those tubes that we live right now? So, in our next segment, we're going to consider this tubular form and we're going to explore our autonomic nervous system development, how it settles in to ignite and light up and wake up all of these structures for the best growth possible. So, Dr. Kathy here, your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV, and we'll be right back. Achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, 
Coached to Greatness. Unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBN Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBN Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here on Bold Brave TV with your neurotransformation journey. And in this section, we're going to look at that autonomic nervous system and how it came to how it came to be to light us up and live, let us live through it. Um, we've talked about our blue brain tube, okay, uh, gliding and grinding on that yoke ball. And we're going to see how there's a layer that forms like the icing on the cake, this neural crest layer. This is going to turn into our autonomic system. So here we have like you know, about a six week four to six week brain tube and um, it's getting its crest cells melted into it. So if this is our blue brain tube, where that blue arrow is, it starts to dive in. And these green dots, it's like two skunk stripes down the back of the tube. So that um, as the brain tube dives in and makes its brain and spinal cord proper tube, the green lines meet and that becomes our neural crest of our autonomics from brain to tailbone down there. And another cool thing to look at here is that, you know, okay, there's the ectoderm that's going to become our skin. It goes from brain tube to skin. Here's our brain and spinal cord inside now in that aqua tube, ectoderm lighting up our autonomics. And this red mesoderm layer in between, look how complex it's gotten from a simple schmear, okay, <laughs> to a really more dynamic layer because it's got to do what? It's got to build our vascular system. It's got to build our musculoskeletal system and so many of our organs. And all of that we will see gets lit up by this green crest cell layer of our autonomics. So that, you know, as things progress here, there's your green crest cells melting into your brain tube. And there, oh, there's your, the, that mesoderm alongside your brain tube that'll build the bones of your body, including your skull bones. And oh, uh-huh, autonomics are going to percolate in and wake up your vascular system as well. And then here's your yellow face pouches and, uh, and that's going to turn into your mouth, your throat, your thyroid, and your lung buds. So the layers start complexifying based on the vitality of the environment, the uterine environment, and the vitality within 
the conceptus to feet to embryo. And our autonomic nervous system really kind of has three segments to it. What's with our body and building in threes? Um, there's the neural crest cells, okay, that melt over that brain tube that deal with all that function, including waking up, starting to wake up the integrative circuits, okay, and TS, and this for your respiratory system. Um, there's a cardiovascular segment, okay, where the green crest cells start melting in to build that heart we need to live with. And then there's a third section of trunk crest cells that go in and wake up uh, your spine, your gut organs, your adrenal glands, your uh, paravertebral nerves, your, uh, you know, your, your sensory neurons. So there's a section for your brain, a section for your heart, and a section for your gut and everything else. And we're going to spend a little extra moment with these pharyngeal pouches, with these neural crest cells, because this is what builds your sensory processing switchboard in your brain. This is the organizer up here. Well, you know what? What's that body telling me to do? Oh, then how do I work it out there? So here's your blue brain tube. The green crest cell layer melts in to wake up those little yellow pouches. And there's trigeminal five going to help build your mouth. There's seven and eight for ears, for vestibulars. There's nine going to connect cardiorespiratory function. So these crest cells wake up our cranial nerve nuclei so they can reach forward and build our face. And uh, yeah, time passes. And then, oh, here we are. What? I've got a mandible. I've got inner ear bones and, and a, a hyoid bone that holds my tongue and my thyroid. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's my my important sensory motor things. And so what we see again here from this very simple tubular form, the vitality of it, the rhythmic organization of it leads to all these complexifying processes. And then, okay, yeah, time passes. Here we are again. And we know now that from our vitality, we have autonomic um, illumination <laughs> from brain tube down our brain and spinal cord to um, to our gut tube, all right, through uh, mouth, throat, all our organs, all right. And we've also got this autonomic illumination through our vascular system, mesoderm, okay, musculoskeletal, heart, Okay, spleen gonads, they come off your mesoderm. So um, this, is, this is the ignition process, all right, from our vitality. And how does this communication occur? Well, in our next segment, we're going to look a little more clearly at that brainstem circuit board development that's directing all of this information, this huge conversation from belly to breath to heartbeat to brainstem to you bringing your magic to the world out there. So let's take a moment, slide in, find our breath. You know what to do here. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Thank you. Identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting, Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com. 
or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And now that we have an idea of just how profound this tubular dynamic process has built us, all right, where does all this sensory information from our interoceptive processing to meeting the world out there, where does it all get organized? That would be in our brainstem circuit board. That's the first stop for sensory information processing. And as we uh, learned um, in an earlier episode, this is our sensory nerve functioning. This is our cranial nerve circuit board, okay? And we have sensory nerves that just take the information in and move it along for integration. We have motor nerves that like just, boom, move to keep us safe. You know, you inhale something, who sneeze, okay? Uh, something not right with your mouth, cough, okay? There's some reflexive motor nerves taking care of us. And then a lot of our nerves are mixed sensory motor, as we'll, we'll see. So we've got our one, two, and three, take care of our eyeballs. Ophthalmic olfactory is one, ophthalmic is two, and then three, four, uh, nerves to control our eye movement so we can track what we need to in the world. Trigeminal five, that bully in the brainstem that we've seen, um, up to midbrain, down to medulla, the magic first inch. And this cranial five interpreting all of what's happening, <laughs> all those sensory motor input from our face and our mouth, uh, and then directs the output, oh, cough, oh, spit, oh, pucker up, it's good, okay? So um, there's that section. And then cranial nerve nine, glossopharyngeal, um, hang on, right down here, cranial nine, uh, that is receiving input from your cardiac vessels saying, hey, we got too much CO2 in here, we need some more O2, all right? breathe faster, breathe harder, get more O2 into our bloodstream. And so that's uh, having a distinct conversation for us that starts to integrate, oh, these other critical body systems, okay? And Vegas is, is part of that too, that um, it's monitoring our visceral function, including that heartbeat. And what do we know? It can speed it up, it can slow it down. And that's reflected in our overall health as well. Cranial 11, our accessory motor nerve is out there to uh, turn our head side to side. And then cranial 12, our hypoglossal motor um, output to move your tongue. So, um, so <laughs> what we know also is that it's the respiratory circuits in the brainstem that position the tongue to keep your airway open. So little, little buddy I was working with yesterday, a lot of 
traumatic incident and brain confusion, but yeah, he's playing with his tongue and breathing, and that's very reassuring that he's got that much under control. Now, cranial nerves can't manage it all themselves in that brainstem, so your cranial nerves actually, your brainstem also functions as an integrative, a switchboard. And this is where signals from medulla and pons, those first two inches, talk to cerebellum, talk to thalamus, talk upstream to cortex and to insula. And so, yeah, the big input output is, the big input is here in the brainstem, but then send the signals, move them along so that the more complicated circuitry, the integrative circuits can make sure things get done right. Okay. And what have we been talking about forever? Thalamus, hello. So motor input, you know, right arm talks up your right spinal cord into cerebellum and crisscrosses over to the opposite insula, thalamus, where it goes to insula and our homunculus maps. So motor stuff goes up and crisscrosses in the brain, visceral heat, thermal stuff, uh, crisscrosses immediately and meets it up there. So all kinds of integrative switchboard magic going on here. And here's our motor signal, all right? Coming up from the body, the red arrow, crossing over. Thalamus, what do you think? Oh, send it to insula, we'll see what this means. Uh, send it to the homunculus. Okay, now here's your output, go move. Okay, that's how that works. Now viscerally, oh, my tummy is gurgly and empty. Uh, that signal goes straight up to thalamus and then to insula and, oh, insula, the magician up there, we know what, it says, feed me, feed me. It sends the message that you need for your survival there. So, um, you know, we see that, uh, we see that these old fashioned linear brain pictures, okay? Brain stem, cerebellum, midbrain, and thalamus is on the outside of this little valley here. Um, but it's really much more dynamic, okay? Here's cerebellum blending, crisscrossing into your brain stem. Here it is deeper in the middle to talk to thalamus. Now see how this makes sense. And then thalamus says, whoa, insula, take it. A homunculus, you got it. Okay, we know what to do here. And when these circuits coordinate with insula, we know what? We know that this is part of our embodied interoceptive process. And so our embodied awareness, this ownership of self must be established for our self-regulation to occur. So this mapping, body, brainstem, thalamus, insula, oh wait, I'm here. Okay, I know I'm here. And when we work with our kiddos where the wiring's a little scrambled, um, they can't just follow the rules out there. That's not going to mean anything. They're not going to learn anything. But if they know, let me pause, Ooh, slide into my breath. Okay, I know I'm here. I know I'm here. This is part of our litany. Then, oh, okay, this is what I need to do. I'm here. I'm in that environment. Here's the action I can take. So, whew, starting to make a little more sense there. <laughs> All questions come back to pause and slide in and find your soft breath. So, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And in our next segment, we'll explore more what this means for us right here. Thank you. See you in a minute. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? 
Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela G. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Well, Dr. Kathy here. Welcome back to your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And let's let's see what all of this this information means when we put it together. And as we start that conversation, I just want to take a minute to honor our thalamus capsules up here that are they are the key players in this sensory motor processing, self-processing integration. And we've talked about how, yeah, there are these two capsules right behind your eyeball stalks back there. And um, they actually, they're very busy. We know this. They're relaying sensory motor signals to the cerebral cortex, to our insula. They're there to regulate our consciousness, our sleep, our alertness. And uh, they take in information from all sensory systems except our olfactory and relay those signals where they got to go. Um, so uh, they're receiving information from both our motor sim system and our visceral afferent system. And as such, there's three layers to your thalamic capsules in here. One layer maps and communicates with your mouth for your oral motor function. The second layer is mapping and monitoring your visceral function. And the third layer is mapping and monitoring your proprioceptive movement function. So you know where we see this getting confused is in our kiddos who have tongue tie, oral motor confusion, where huh, maybe their tummy is gurgling like crazy down there, but there's a hitch in the giddy up from brainstem up to thalamus where it can't organize what it knows its viscera needs and how to move the mouth to get the food in. Or the kiddo can get the food in, but then there's, you know, the gut doesn't work right getting it down. So um, this is just some of the critical back and forth function of this, these thalamic capsules. And just here's the lumps I'm talking about. Okay, this is from the back of your brain stem, your two thalamic capsules behind the stalks of your eyeballs. And these four bumps here, that's your colliculi. We took what? We talked about them the other week. Superior colliculi, taking in your visual information. Inferior, taking in your audio vestibular. This is the four-way traffic jam where I need to see you before I can hear you or vice versa. And, uh, you know, all these buddies talk to thalamus too. 
And it is possible um, that sometimes with aging, with early onset trauma, that um, hearing dysfunction can be mapped in thalamus. And when we wake that up with its colliculi, huh, hearing is restored. So um, this is just, you know, we need to respect. Here's another, another shot. And this picture over here, the orange little blobby here is your cerebellum. You know how I talk about motor signals come up your spinal cord and then crisscross to get to the other side of the brain? This is where it's happening. These are your cerebellar stalks that wrap around your brainstem to get the information over to the other side. And then where do they go from there? Well, crisscross applesauce over to your thalamus and then up to your cortex, out to your insula. So this is um, this is that kind of pathway. And if we look, this is from the side. If we look over here, it's from the back. So your cerebellum would be right here. Here's the crisscross stalks reaching around. And uh, there's your colliculi, okay? Superior, inferior. And oh, just in case there wasn't enough mischief here, um, Here's your trigeminal nerve five. If you're clenched, is it gonna obstruct that signal transmission? It could disrupt it, yeah. So we need to, um, this is just a sneak peek at um, how these structures are really built for that function. So this is the picture that we organize to, all right? And here we see from our blue brain tube surging and our yoke ball tugging back, time passes. And this is our frame of reference for our embodiment, for our sensory motor processing. Here's your blue brain tube coming up, medulla, pons, thalamus is right here, okay? Forward to your eyeballs. This is how good belly breathing here and jello eyeballs there, unclenches your jaw down here. And um, it still likes that rhythmic function within because, you know, what else is in there? Our blood supply, um, hello, all our tissues need oxygen up there. And, uh, and we still have a brain rhythm. That brain in your cranium, yeah, that brain is wrapped in a membrane the dura mater, and there's CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, flux circulating all around, feeding those brain tubes, okay? Cleaning us up while we sleep at night and pulsing, spiraling. What more spiraling fluids? All the way down our spinal cord to our tailbone. So um, yes, it looks simple and that's okay. Here's our simple container to um, hold us together while we function. And uh-huh, there, that blue brain tube, yellow yolk ball, red mesoderm, here we are living that pulsing dynamic, living that autonomic regulation. And guess what? When you touch someone's face, you're touching their brainstem. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. Through facial, through trigeminal, through these nerves into the brainstem, touch the face. You're touching the brainstem. There's a, there's a different way of what's really going on from inside to outside and back. So curious journey, isn't it? And uh, here we are. Here we are in our pulsing autonomic percolating self inside. So we're going to take one more break and you know what we do there. Let's take that belly breath now. Let's slide in and find that rhythm so that when we inhale and our belly expands, we exhale, we soften, we feel ourselves here. And all of these systems can balance us and manage us. So Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV, and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And yes, we've been on quite the journey today um, from that original tubular spark that fluid spark that started the life we're bringing now and how um this these stories of sensory brain dynamics kind of illustrate um the generalized pattern of sensory input interpretation output and the difference here is that normally in our culture, in our old therapy story rules, um, it was about extraceptive input interpretation and extraceptive output to meet the world. And we've been missing this interoceptive piece. So here, what we see is ain't no outside without the inside, all right? We need both. We need to honor the dance of our internal processing as we navigate the world. And yes, this occurs through our autonomic dynamics within, but also it occurs through our decision, our willingness, our presence, our interoceptive awareness and presence. Whew, when we know we're here, yes, all right, then we can navigate out there when we know we're in here our autonomics can care for us better inside all right they can organize us better and help us function better viscerally vascularly internally so that um our health is restored all right remember your healthy restoration is going to come from this soft, deep landing belly breath in here, um, maybe informed by a story out there, okay, or by those vitamins you take. But if you're not unclenched and gurgling in here, stories and stuff is may not do what the PR says they're going to do. So understand as well, our body and our brain, our brain and body, have been navigating this dance since our conception about who growing it, building it inside, in the security of our uterine environment. And, you know, things, the input from mama's environment is uh, distorted, is drugged, is stressed, is whatever, is not healthy, then 
we're already in there learning to be on defense and try to grow ourselves as well. And so even if, you know, trauma has started that early, guess what? It's never too late. It's never too late to come in to find your truth. Your truth is bigger than your trauma. And we slide in to meet that, you know, with our who belly breath we make our rhythms and our rituals we find our quiet corner we create the timing and our rituals of i'm going to take 10 minutes now to myself and do a dr kathy meditation and listen and land in my breathing again and you know as this gets more familiar your landing then all of your systems can come into balance and take care of you from the inside out. So what if we were able to honor our internal organization and regulation and know that we could choose to do that and explore this journey within? Here's your neurotransformation journey um, from belly, breath, and heartbeat to brainstem. Here's where it is. And yes, we had a talk today about the why of the wiring. You know, this is how I taught sensory processing disorder forever. And you know what? You got to know the mechanics that are built to function. But, you know, under the why of the wiring is the wisdom of your truth. And it's been waiting for us. And so here in this interoceptive illumination of us, we slide in, we feel our belly breath, we feel ourselves landing, and here we are. Let's bring the magic and go. So thank you for being with me today. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. You've been watching Neurotransformation Journey with your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Tune in each week as Dr. Kathy will introduce a common challenge and outline basic resolution strategies. Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, here on Bold Brave TV.